Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here and welcome back to another Monster Hunter Cross video and another episode of the Weapon Workshop. So far we've taken a look at the Sword and Shield, the Hammer and most recently the Insect Blade. But in today's video we are going to be turning our attention to one of Monster Hunter's powerhouse weapons, the Greatsword. Unlike last week's combo heavy weapon, the Greatsword has a limited selection of moves available but don't let that put you off because it is capable of dealing some serious damage. So let's get started. To begin with, as always, we're going to start off with Guild Style. This is the style that you'll be most familiar with if you're coming over from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, the main difference being that you also have the ability to equip two hunting arts. Now with your weapon drawn, pressing X will perform an overhead slash. This can also be charged, but we'll talk about charge attacks shortly. Pressing X a second time will follow this slash with a slap, and this deals impact damage. This short combo can also be looped infinitely if you continually press X, but we won't really be doing that, so let's move on. Also with your weapon sheath, pressing forward and X will perform your draw attack, but this is the same as standing X. You can also charge that from unsheath, but again we'll get to that in just a moment. A on the other hand will perform a wide spinning slash, and pressing A two more times after that will then perform a strong slash, which can also be charged, and a super swipe. X plus A together will do a backwards overhead slash, and this move can actually be linked after pretty much any attack. For example, you can go X, A, X and A, or you could go X, X, X and A. However, those combos are just an example of how things could link together, but in order to be truly effective with this weapon, we need to factor in Greatsword's most powerful feature, charge attacks. If you hold down X, that previous overhead slash will now begin to charge, and there are three levels of charge. Each level does more damage, and obviously level three does the most. If you charge it too long, however, you'll overcharge it, and your hit will instead come out as a level two charge as opposed to a level three. For a level 3 charge, you want to let go of X on the final flash. In fact, in Monster Hunter Cross there's even a visual indicator to show that you've done it right. See these swiping effects here? That is basically the game's way of telling you that you're doing a level 3 charge. And again, as mentioned, this can also be done from an unsheathed attack. After the charge attack lands, you can then go into regular combos. So the combos I showed you earlier for demonstration purposes simply swap out the basic X hit for a charge attack, and now we're getting somewhere. However, that is not all. See after the slap attack, you can then pull back and press X to go into a strong charge. This also has three levels of charge, but the nice thing about this move is that you cannot overcharge it. You can hold it down as long as you like, and it'll always come out as a level three charge, provided you've got to the third flash and you haven't let go of it prematurely. But what's cool about this move is this level three charge is stronger than your regular one. However, that's not all. The icing on the cake is that if you press X after landing the strong charge, you'll then perform a super swipe, and the power of the super swipe depends on the power of the strong charge. So in other words, if you do a level 3 strong charge, you do a level 3 super swipe. If you do a level 2, you do level 2. You get the idea. And again, you can see the visual indicator that shows we're doing the most damage. You can also do a strong charge during the A combo. I mentioned earlier that the second hit in the combo can be charged. So now we can go A, then hold A, and then we can unleash it, and you can then follow that move with either A or X to perform the follow-up super swipe. Moving on, if you hold down R you can block, but this should only really be done in emergencies because it will heavily deplete your sharpness. You can also draw straight into guard by holding down R, X and A together. If you press X whilst guarding, you'll perform a kick, and pressing X after the kick will perform a slap. And once again you can then pull back an X after the slap to go into the strong charge or the super swipe combo. Now should you need to, you can also roll out of most of your hits, and this is something you want to do a lot because the greatsword is powerful but the attack animations are slow, so rolling out to try and avoid the end attack animations will help you massively. Speaking of which, your strategy for using this weapon should be hit and run. Basically, you never want to walk around with the weapon drawn. You move too slowly, and it's just going to get you hit. Typically, you put your weapon away, you run up and you find your opening, you draw into a charge attack, perform as many hits as possible, then you put your weapon away, move around until you find your next opening. This will be the most effective way to use this weapon. Now finally, the last move is from a jump attack. You jump off a ledge and you press X to perform an overhead slam. But if you press X after landing this hit, you'll then perform a level 2 super swipe for free. So that is all there is to guild style. A small selection of basic moves, but when chained together in the correct way, you have massive damage potential. Now as I always say, the first draw for Striker is your ability to equip three hunting arts, and should you want to, those can be the three weapon specific ones, and we'll take a look at them a little later in this video, but for the Greatsword they are pretty powerful. However, when talking about the moves, Striker Greatsword is a lot more like Greatsword from Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. Basically, it's old school. You have no strong charge or super swipe. Your X combo is simply overhead slash and slap, and pulling back an X after the attack will simply return you to the regular overhead charge and not the strong charge. A is also now simply the wide slash and doesn't have any follow up, and again, definitely no strong charge. 
and this also applies to jump attacks. After a jump attack, you now perform a slap as opposed to the level 2 super swipe. Aside from that, however, everything else is the same. And while the addition of strong charge on super swipe was nice in 4 ultimate, the old school greatsword is still a brilliant weapon, so do not let this put you off. First up, with Aerial Style you only have access to one hunting art, so make sure you choose wisely and pick something that will benefit your playstyle. Much like Striker, Aerial Style also doesn't have access to the Strong Charge or the Super Swipe, but in addition to that you also don't have the Slap after the Kick. That move is however accessible after the regular Overhead Slash. One of the first differences with Aerial Style however is the Draw Attack. Your Draw Attack is now this cool, fast jumping slash. But what's even cooler is that you can roll forward straight after this attack, so you can then go from this attack straight into an aerial launch by rolling towards the monster. Alternatively, you could roll out of it or go into the slap. It is entirely up to you. However, the biggest difference in aerial style is your inability to charge on the ground. Holding X will now no longer charge your slash, but will instead perform a simple uncharged overhead slash. But the reason for that is because it is now tied to your aerial jump. After jumping off a monster or a teammate, holding X whilst airborne will begin charging your slash. The cool thing about this charge is that it's much faster than a regular one. You can reach a level 3 charge whilst airborne, and upon landing on the ground, you'll automatically unleash the attack. You can of course let go earlier if you want to, but you of course want to make sure you have level 3 before doing so for maximum damage. And again, the follow up to this is simply the slap. There is no hidden strong charge or super swipe whatsoever. Finally, moving over to Bushido, this style also only allows you to equip one hunting art, but you do of course have the added ability to perform Bushido evades by rolling through monster attacks. Now Bushido's basic combos are the same as Striker. You have no access to Strong Charge or Super Swipe off the Slap or off the Wide A Slash. However, unlike Striker, it is not completely gone and we'll get to that in a moment. Everything else is the same, charging on the ground is back, as is the Slap off the Kick, etc. Basically, up until we start Bushido evading, it is the exact same as Striker. But, Bushido Evade is where things get interesting. See, after a Bushido Evade, you can press X to go into a powerful slash. But, if you press and hold X after this first attack, you'll go straight into a very fast charging strong charge. And again, remember the cool thing about strong charge is that you cannot overcharge them. So you can follow up this first attack with a really fast level 3 attack. But, just like in Guild Style, you can also follow this strong charge with a third X input to perform the super swipe. So as you can see, while the strong charge and the super swipe aren't present in the regular combos, in this style they aren't gone completely. And that is pretty much it. Now let's take a quick look at those hunting arts. First up you have Brimstone Slash. This unleashes stored energy in a really powerful slash, plus what's really good is that you can't be knocked over during this move. Next up you have Lion's Maw, which is a technique that stores energy in your hunter and their blade, and your next attack, whether you hit or miss, will deal more damage. The emphasis there being whether you hit or miss, because of course if you miss this, you've lost your opening. And finally, we have the Thrusting Earth Slash. In this move, you drag your blade along the ground and you end in a powerful upward slash. Do bear in mind, however, if you are using Striker or Guild Style and you can equip two or more Hunting Arts, then you can also use something like Lion's Maw in conjunction with Brimstone Slash to do even more damage. Just make sure you don't miss. So finally, to wrap up this video, my personal favourite style, and again this week it was a hard choice. Guild is so strong simply because it takes everything that is good about Greatsword from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and gives you two hunting arts on top, so for simple damage output this is a great option. But Aerial on the other hand is ridiculously fun to use, and given how easy it is to jump on a monster, you can land level 3 charges so much faster than any other style. True you don't have access to the strong charge or the super swipe and that is a shame, but if you can keep up the aerial pressure you can more than make up for the damage. As for Bushido, the only reason I didn't say that one is simply because landing the strong charge and the super swipe after a Bushido evade can be a little temperamental. You'll find that you tend to miss the final slash a lot of the time, but again, this is down to personal preference. Each style is good in its own way, and it's ultimately down to you to decide what works. Now that brings me to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful, and if you did, then it'd be great if you could hit that like button and comment down below letting me know which style most appeals to you. Make sure you tune in next Wednesday for the next Weapon Workshop, and thank you very much for watching. Take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.